All right, welcome to the podcast on today's show with Emmanuel from Blackbird. Thanks for joining. We have a pizza in the oven. We're going to try it live here in a second. For people who don't know, what's your company do? Yes, thanks for having me. I'm from Blackbird Foods, where we make primarily frozen pizza and wings that are restaurant quality and plant-based. And what made you want to go down the road of frozen food? What was the problem you saw in the market? Obviously, you, you enjoy pizza and wings. Who doesn't? Right. <laughs> Tell me the, the story. Yeah, so if you look at the frozen category, especially frozen pizza, most of the products are just these mass manufactured, co-packed products, meaning it's done by a third-party manufacturer. And the pizzas are just these flat discs of dough, not really made like pizza should be made. And I'm from New York, where every corner has a pizza He's a shop. New Yorker kid. <laughs> well, actually, I grew up in Arizona, but I've been in New York for like uh, 12 years. Okay. My And my family's actually from New York. So every corner has a, a pizza shop. The, the dough is risen overnight, tossed by hand. So um, it's frustrating when you go to a grocery store and you go to the frozen pizza aisle and that doesn't really exist, mm -hmm. especially in the plant-based space. Everything is typically gluten-free, the other the plant-based options. I don't know why, but that's how it is. Yeah, they assume you're vegan. You must be gluten-free. Yeah, like they group, right. they group them together for that's some right. reason. So myself, along with my co-founders, we actually started off making plant-based protein for restaurants in New York. And, okay. And what kind of protein? It's called like, seitan, which is a wheat-based sure. protein. Yep. So we developed seitan that's basically a block, sort of like a brisket or a flank that we started selling to chefs and restaurants in New York and Philly, where we were all based to use as a blank canvas plant-based protein for their menus. Okay. So we got that pretty widely distributed, and one of my co-founders also had a pretty well-known pizza shop in Philly called Blackbird Pizzeria that was completely plant-based as well. So we started utilizing his recipes and uh, methods. Interesting. So first with the seitan, mm -hmm. you prove the market, you get enough interest, people like it, you know it tastes good. Mm -hmm. And now this, this other pizzeria becomes like your a trial ground. Exactly. He was yeah. making from the seitan, selling sandwiches, Philly cheesesteaks with our seitan there. Wow. Um, and pizzas with seitan toppings. Everyone's always asking, you know, where can I get, you know, can I use this at home? So we right. made... A retail line of the seitan, and then we're like, let's start making pizzas. Is this under Blackbird? Correct. The yeah. seitan? Yes. Okay, so people can buy that in the store also, or where is it that It is available? in store, yeah. Okay. And tons of retailers. And how do people store. generally, for the people listening who might want to buy it, how do they cook it? What's the best form? Like, you, you can do so much with it, obviously, but what, yeah. what, is, what have you found as to be, like, the best? Yeah, so we have four of the seitan. That was our kind of version one of products. That's uh, We have four varieties, original chili lime, rosemary garlic, and uh, Texas barbecue. And it's all in shredded form, so you can use it similar. You know, the original is just like a good chicken breast substitute. Yeah. Do whatever you – season it how you want, cook it how you want. All of them are pretty good, like seared in a pan. And so the chili lime's good for tacos. Texas barbecue's good for like a pulled pork sandwich. Rosemary uh, garlic is good as a chicken substitute. So uh, like roasted chicken with potatoes. So most of our seitan sales comes from food service, our food service side of the business still. Okay, so still the but chefs. It's still, yeah, it's still, um, you can So it's not like your hero store. product at the grocery store. No, so our hero products are the pizzas. Okay. Um, but the, you know, the whole food shoppers and the ones who know what seitan is, it's really popular with them. Yeah. The first time I had, it, I think, was at Crossroads here. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, and yeah. it was like unbelievable. It yeah, blew my mind. Yeah, it's much meatier it's so crazy. than tofu or some of those other proteins, um, and you can do a lot with you it. You can do a lot with it, yeah. All right, cool. So, and so you're getting data on the vegan market. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's working. The chefs like it, which is probably the most, the biggest recommendation you could have, really. And then you, you sort of test kitchen this thing at the pizzeria. People are liking it, it sounds like. And then you guys go, okay, let's go into selling pizza. Yes. In the <laughs> okay. And all this right. was all. So we officially launched January 2020. It was just myself. Not a bad time to launch. COVID's you know, coming. I, yeah, I didn't know a global pandemic was about to break out. <laughs> and so we, we had our products. We had a, a small uh, production facility in our and my co-founder's restaurant commissary space. So I literally was just walking the streets of New York, selling into restaurants, selling into grocery stores, whoever would take it. And, you know, we started getting picked up. And then COVID happened. We but, but people want to try it first? Because it feels like a difficult pitch. 
is it it's all vegan it's all plant-based yes our whole brand is plant-based okay um and so and you're pitching this to new york as kid Oof. yeah you know all the we have a lot of independent grocery <laughs> stores in new york and a lot of re- so i was doing both grocery stores and restaurants you know the restaurants was more a satan play I'd drop off samples, follow up, come back, get, and then, you know, you need distributor partners. So, you know, you, we convinced the local New York distributors to take us on, start bring, selling it into the independent stores. When we started, we were making like 100 pizzas a day. Now we're making like 4,000 a day. Um, so it's been an exciting journey, but that's how we got started. And well, then COVID, sorry, COVID happened. How, how uh, are you guys funding this? Are you guys still at your jobs? Is this like a was, side hustle while you're doing the same We were bootstrapping that first year, like okay. just making the sale, putting, you know, yeah. paying putting off. Putting all the money right back <laughs> yeah. in. Got it. Okay. I was the only like corporate, so so to speak, employee. <laughs> full time. Full time. Okay. And then we corporate. had. Corporate. <laughs> you know, funny. business <laughs> business side. And then we had our facility team members uh, about seven at the time yeah just like working in the commissary yeah yeah making this all day and you're kind of lucky because the other business is sort of uh, i guess paying for the commissary in some way well yeah there was very limited initial capital expenditure we had to lay out because we had this we rented from them but the equipment was there the space was there yeah perfect and so yeah that's how we got started and then like as you alluded to, COVID happened in March essentially, and all our restaurant business dried up overnight, yeah. and no one was taking in-person meetings anymore. So I built a, a Squarespace site like overnight just to start selling D to C on dry ice. Yeah, only in New York or how? How? No, like New nation, York? not nationwide. <laughs> okay. I'm like, okay. let's just do it. <laughs> See, okay. we need a we need a lifeline. <laughs> and okay. people started i would i would go into face vegan facebook groups just like posting discount codes you know this is something people don't Instagram. say today everything you're saying is interesting a vegan facebook group 10 years oh, ago 12, 12 yeah. years ago didn't exist yeah no there's there's today a lot you're going right back into facebook that's it's great. pretty much like every this was also f- over four years ago sure. you know it wasn't that long ago but facebook was probably more used so there's a lot of vegan Facebook groups, like for every different city, like yeah. vegans of Austin, of yeah. New York, whatever. So I would just post like a link to our website and a discount code for that group. Okay. And how much was it when you guys were coming? And was it always this size? So it was always, was this 12 inch? Yeah. Well, the box is a 10 by 10 inch. Okay. Um, so it was always that size, about three servings per, per pizza. Okay. And people started buying it. And, and how much would what, you come to market with on the cost? So retail is about nine ninety nine, and online you have to buy a six pack because we're not going to ship the shipping. on dry ice. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for seventy two dollars, including shipping. That feels pretty cheap. Ten bucks. Um, nine ninety nine. Yeah, about yeah, ten bucks per pizza. Okay. You know, we want to be. What is like a DiGiorno, Your your largest competition here. You know, really depends on the retailer, but probably seven ninety nine. Okay, so yeah. not bad, not that different. Yeah, you want to be. You try to be around below the ten dollar mark in frozen pizza. Um, okay, it's crept up with inflation, but okay, that's the goal. And that's just something the retailers tell you, or is that just like a rule of thumb that you? Um, well, we hear it from the retailers, and okay. it proves itself in the data. You know, the sales data. Interesting. So, so how many different SKUs did you play with before uh, coming to market? And then so we have well, yeah, kale and mushroom launched... here, and then we have what's the other one? The Supreme. This one, yeah, Supreme is in the oven right now. This yep. is oops tomato veggie which tomato is our veggie. new cheeseless pizza okay we launched originally with four varieties um, yeah once we launched our website d to c we started getting attention from Erwan and other retailers because i think people started asking if they can buy it so no pr so, uh you weren't hiring no. a pr firm no the marketing was basically you guys instagram facebook mm-hmm. interesting and so Erwan gets a hold of okay so these retailers are finding you at that point, yes. <laughs> that's incredible. And uh, yeah, so that's how we got started. Then and so once, once they order from you, you guys are probably, at the time you're making hundreds, and then all of a sudden you're getting a big order. Yeah, so what's uh, that like? Yeah, with Food CPG, you need what's called an anchor account. So an example could be an Airwan here in LA that they'll bring you into the, the food distribution warehouse. So the big food distributor, one of them is UNFI. And so um, once you're in that warehouse, you not only can sell to Erwan, who has brought you there, but you can start selling to anyone else who pulls from that warehouse. Mm-hmm. So that's the food. That's like the typical game 
you have to play in the food CPG space. So you prove yourself at Erwan, show it to more store, the data to more stores, and eventually it's kind of snowballs. So you guys, you guys are seeing healthy velocities despite not being able to be in the store, not being able to do demos. It's yeah, working. I mean, no demos were happening at that for totally. like the first two years of COVID. Yeah, we would have done them, but and we are you still allowed. bootstrapping at that point, or are you thinking let's go raise some capital now? Right. So once we got into Air One, once we started getting that a lot of that traction at the end of 2020, we were able to do our first raise. Okay. So we did a pre-seed. Yeah. Um, we partnered with a VC that that's when we were able to raise some capital. Okay. And how much did hiring. you raise at that point? Uh, our first raise, we raised about 700,000. Okay. That's yeah. a pretty good size. Yeah. Pre-seed. Okay. Yeah. We're not one of these brands that have raised like some others I can cite have raised <laughs> over a hundred million. Sure. Of course. We've raised much, much, much less than that. And we're more about organic growth, like finding the right customer fit and just growing with the consumer base and, and growing naturally rather than like forcing it down people's throats, so to speak. Totally. Um, yeah. And what markets are you in now, just from a retail perspective? Where are you guys? So now we're in about 3,000 okay. retail doors, including Whole Foods, Sprouts, Fresh Market. We're in 300 Target stores that we're really proud of. And then, yeah, most of, like, in the we're in all the regional chains, like Central Market in Texas, PCC. We just not Costco, in. not yet. You know, we're if Costco's listening, uh, <laughs> we're ready for you. But yeah. no, not not yet in Costco. It's starting to smell really good in here. Uh, uh, yeah, which is awesome. I, I we got. Smell it too. <laughs> and so, when it comes to the ingredients, let's talk about. Yeah. If the foodie's listening and they're like, "Ah, mm -hmm. oh, frozen anything, I'm out." What are you doing in the pizza from a taste perspective that you're like, "Okay, here's how we're a little bit different." Yes. Yeah, so, as I was mentioning earlier, most frozen pizzas are just these flat discs of dough that go on a conveyor system with automatic like topping drops along the conveyor system. Uh, we actually make pizza dough uh, that rises overnight in our facility and is hand tossed and then is made like a regular pizza and then just flash frozen and shipped to the retailer. So it's really like a restaurant, the pizza you would get at a restaurant, but just more accessible to, to consumers in the grocery store. Okay. And then when it comes to the sauce, sauce is some all, of these other ingredients. Yeah. So the sauce, um, most of our pizzas are just made with our tomato sauce, which is just, you know, we just uh, crush, use crushed tomato okay. and some salt and uh, basil. That's pretty much it. And olive oil. And then all of our toppings, so our plant-based meat toppings, most of them are made by us. So we have, a, you'll, we're about to try the Supreme that has our Seitan sausage on it. We have a barbecue chicken pizza. Is it ready? Do you want to try yeah. it? All right, let's and then we just launched a pizza, over. a pepperoni pizza with Beyond Meat. Um, so they, that has Beyond Meat pepperoni on it. Is it, it hot? I like the way you served it up, Nick. That's that, looks, that looks pretty good for your first. Uh, <laughs> so this is our Supreme. It has our tomato sauce, our own um, coconut-based cheese, sausage, peppers, and onion. That's great. That's like a real Supreme. I'm glad you like it. And yeah, that was, I picked that up at Whole Foods in Venice yesterday. So it's got good dough. Thank you. It's good dough, good bread. I'm going to eat this whole thing. Good. <laughs> A lot of ASMR happening for you. <laughs> I hope our list, your listeners don't have. Uh, no, people love it. The ASMR clips called? go crazy. This is delicious <laughs> for 10 bucks. Good crunch. That was a good, yeah. That's what you're that talking about. That was a good about. ad for us. You like the crunch. Yes, we like it mm -hmm. like crispy on the bottom. Okay, this is your hero product now. This is our best seller. Yeah, we just launched a pepperoni pizza with Beyond Meat. Yep. Um, that they make a really good new pepperoni that we're the the only frozen pizza to be using it. Okay, and is the hope there from the Beyond Meat side that then people get more comfortable essentially with the meats, and so this is one way to introduce their product that they can then go buy afterwards. Yeah, That's exactly. Sort of the idea. Okay. Good. I mean, and for us, we're able to then broaden our customer base by marketing towards like Beyond Meat has a huge following. So it's been good for us. And then this is our new cheeseless pizza, the tomato veggie. All of our pizzas have our plant-based cheese on it, which you seem to like, I seem to like, <laughs> I do like. <laughs> yeah. But for those who are dairy, you know, don't like plant-based cheese or just want a dairy-free pizza, that's healthy with veggies. That's an option too that just launched at Sprouts. I'm just gonna have more here. Yeah, please. Uh, when it comes to these partnerships, and so we've had like daring foods on the podcast, mm -hmm. 
any discussions with them around their chicken or we have a, a pizza you, with them you do yeah okay. that's funny you mentioned what's them. that one so we launched about a year ago a buffalo chicken pizza with them i should have brought one for it's you better guys. second bite is better <laughs> yeah that's um great. so yeah they've been they've been good partners because again they have you know their consumer base that we're able to to cross promote with and also their buyer relationships, our buyer relationships. So it's just a good totally mutual. Um, yeah. Do you envision doing more of that? Cause obviously you have your own products too. And so it becomes like a, yeah. it's kind of a perfect inter- Interestingly enough, it's a way to introduce multiple brands together. The collabs work, the marketing's probably great. Mm-hmm. I think for the plant-based space, we're stronger when we're unite working together. Mm-hmm. A lot of other people might just think we're competitors, but we actually see, ourselves and we talk about this a lot with my friends who are you know from daring or whatever you know if we're able to grow the plant-based set in the grocery store totally. you yeah. know we'll be able to displace the other products so yeah, you're expanding the market for everybody exactly yeah that makes sense and then aside from that i didn't bring it today but we also have um our newest lawn newest innovation is our plant-based chicken wings uh so we started with a buffalo and uh korean barbecue flavors is um, that with daring or no no, so that's made with our Satan. Okay, got it. Nice. And then to your to answer your question about collaborations, I think it'd be really cool to 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 do collaborations with different sauce companies, which sauces are very trendy right now. There's a lot of good ones on the market. So yeah, we're talking to some some cool sauce companies to potentially do some co branding with there. So what are you coming out with on the on the wing side? What are the different wings? So so far we already have Buffalo Yep. I don't and it comes know. in a bag? Like, how big is it? Yeah, it comes okay. in a 12-ounce 12 12 ounce bag, um, the boneless wings inside with a packet of sauce. So you just pour it over once Oh, interesting. Cooked. Okay. Um, so a lot have, of sauce, I hope. So, sorry? A lot of sauce. Yeah, <laughs> 2.5 ounces of sauce. So we have buffalo variety, Korean barbecue, and we're about to launch a Thai chili and a Texas barbecue flavor. Where will you launch those products first? They're primarily distributed right now on the East Coast in Fresh Market, Mom's Organic Market. They're on Hungry Root and Misfits Market, which are really good partners of ours. So they're in some West Coast places. Uh, there's Pacific Northwest, but I need to get them more in L.A. We're yeah. not really in a lot of L.A. stores. Let us know. Yet. Yeah. When it comes to just the way you think about the company, and so you started with Satan, that seems like it's still a revenue maker for you guys. Do you envision you going completely into the retail CPG world fully at some point? And then... Obviously, you're seeing good data. It works. It's delicious. When it comes to the chicken, it's probably this. I'm sure it'll be the same. And so, are you creating more uh, like other? Are you going into other frozen as well? Or is ch- I know chicken's the yeah. latest, but what else is sort of when you think about your your pipe dream and where you want to take the company? What, what other worlds do you want to attack? Yeah. Yeah. So in retail, we have the pizza and the wings now in the frozen set, and that's where you've really been able to win in retail is this frozen aisle. Mm-hmm. So. We want to continue innovating there with new new pizza and wing skis, but also there's frozen breakfast opportunities. There's frozen snacking, like p- pizza bagels and stuff. Not going to get too into it here, but those types of products. But also outside of retail, I'm starting to see a lot of opportunity in other markets. Um, we're starting to have really good conversations and commitments from California public schools, for example. We've developed a... Um, individual size pizza that um, fits within the FDA gui- nutrition guidelines for for kids. So I'm excited because I've seen the school lunch offerings that are conventionally offered and they're terrible. Yeah, you can speak freely. Um, yeah, I <laughs> yeah, know. Of course, I I mean that's been some a cause I've pretty I've been passionate about for a while. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, is improving school nutrition and nutrition in general. So um, yeah, those pizzas have made with whole wheat flour and whole grains and you can't it doesn't taste like whole wheat <laughs> yeah yeah just like this but in a, for for school so we're really excited to to start launching that and yeah breaking into other there's you know there's so many other opportunities aside from conventional just grocery stores now there's the platforms i mentioned like hungry root and misfits market they do a ton of a ton of volume and are doing great things in the grocery world. So I want to continue exploring those avenues as well. So when you started working with the retailers, you launched in 2020, I know objectively speaking, sort of just like the frozen category really expanded during COVID. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, like before, I would say younger people 
would never have anything in their freezer right. other than ice cream yeah. and ice and maybe a glass for their beer. It wasn't really a place people stocked up on. COVID hits, everyone all of a sudden is like reinventing freezers and buying freezers. When you see sort of the timing wise with the data, do you think it'll go back that way? Or have you seen it where it's like the freezer aisle, let's say, is here to stay? I think it is here to stay. Since COVID, a lot of people spend a lot more time at home, working from home. And I think for a while, there was just so many boring like brands in the in the frozen space that just weren't exciting and just offering pretty gross stuff. And what we've tried to do and... Mm, had, so you're I, saying it was never looked at as like healthy. Yeah, that's healthy right. Healthy or that's even right. like cool or trendy that's right. or interesting. Yeah, um, that's right. It's also, yeah. it's all these legacy brands. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally true. Okay. So it's been reinvented in, in a real way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe so. And, that's true. And our, our consumer base skews more heavily towards the Gen Z millennial crowd. And I think before Frozen was not popular among among those crowds. So we're, I think for retailers, what we tell them is we're attracting a new audience into the Frozen aisle that w- wasn't going there before. Yeah, and your data supports it. Our data supports it, and we That's have to just continue to convince the buyers of that. But yeah, 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 sure. And right now you're raising some capital. Raising capital always. <laughs> but yeah, we're beginning to launch a crowdfunding campaign on Star Engine just to help us continue to grow into new retail, help us get to break even, which would be great this year, which is what we're on track to do. And so, um, yeah, any listeners can go to our campaign on Start Engine. And right now it's in the reservation stage and then soon it'll be going live. What's next for the brand outside of the chicken launch? What's, is there something else you might be working on for like Q4, Q3 of, of this year? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the school, so the school the pizzas school, yeah, I mentioned, that's, cool. that's a big project. And then that will also relate to new retail products that I can't get into right now. But yeah, when you partner with a school, what's like a, how do they buy? Is it for all the public schools of a region? Like what's, what does that look like? It definitely, it depends on the state and the, the district. I've found so far, we're pretty much in the early stages of exploring the whole world, but California districts are pretty easy to work with, surprisingly, where they can uh, purchase independently. And there's there's distributors for schools and, you know, specifically for schools and that kind of thing, that another world we have to navigate. I mean, the issue, of course, with school public schools is the cost. So, you know, New York, I think, is at least New York City, from what I've seen, their plant-based offerings are pretty gross and not, you know, don't offer anything like this. And it's hard to get them to pay for anything better. So those are hurdles we have to overcome. But yeah, so far, we've had some good conversations in the California uh, districts. That's going to be fun. I like that project. Yeah. Well, listen, tell everyone where they can find you and support the brand. Yeah, so our website's blackbirdfoods.com. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. And you can find us in 3,000 stores nationwide or and, and over 300 restaurants. So definitely, if you see us on shelf, feel free to try it out. Get the Supreme Pizza. Yeah. Emmanuel, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.